Now, animals, plants, fungi, biodiversity offers a treasure trove of chemicals and compounds, some of which can be used to treat diseases from malaria to cancer, but more and more species are being threatened with extinction. Is that jeopardizing our health? DW's Louise Osborne took a closer look for World Health Day. A sea snail that is the source of a pain medication a thousand times as powerful as morphine. A North American tree with the power to treat breast cancer. The natural world has helped humans for millennia to treat their health problems. And it plays a central role in the discovery of new drugs. Some of them have gone the full distance. Uh, the thing that's produced in nature is the drug that we use in the clinic. But in many, or perhaps most cases, it's that that uh, chemical idea that's been gained from nature has been uh, elaborated on and altered to give it good properties for, uh, as a medicine. Some 70% of cancer medications alone are based on nature, according to UN experts. But the search for new sources of pharmaceuticals is becoming ever more difficult. Biodiversity is disappearing at an alarming rate. Almost a third of more than 150,000 species assessed as part of the IUCN's Red List, which tracks the state of the world's biodiversity, are threatened with extinction. And humans are to blame. The two things that threaten biodiversity the most at the moment are over-harvesting and land conversion. And that's not just clearance of land for livestock to graze, it's clearance of land for food uh, for livestock to eat and uh, clearance of the oceans. Human-driven climate change is also having an impact. Scientists say loss of biodiversity does not just present a problem for drug discovery. Humans are almost completely dependent on the natural world, whether it's through trees that remove pollutants from the air or crops that provide food. The biodiversity is the fabric that holds our life support together on our planet. You know, if we didn't have living wild nature, um, it would be, you know, much harder or impossible to live on this planet. Governments have promised to tackle biodiversity loss by protecting 30% of land and oceans before 2030. Whether the commitments become action could dictate not just the state of the planet, but also human health. And with me in the studio is Louise Osborne from DW's Environment Desk. Uh, she filed that report, of course. Louise, um, we heard in your report about how biodiversity is extremely important for pharmaceuticals and also for, for food, but surely there's more to it than that. Why else does biodiversity matter for health? Well, I mean, it's not just about, you know, dealing with when we're sick. Actually, it's much more essential in keeping us healthy in the first place. I mean, if we look at trees, for example, they take pollutants out of the air. There are studies that have shown in areas where there are more trees, then uh, air pollution is not such a big problem. And obviously, that is a big killer for humans. Um, there's also wetlands, for example, that clean water. Um, city in India, Calcutta, uses wetlands to, to clean its water for farming and for, for other uses, for drinking. And again, uh, clean water is, is a huge uh, thing for human health, very important. So um, there are all of these things, all of these jobs that nature are doing for us that, you know, we don't really even, you know, follow. Um, and these are just a couple of examples. It seems intuitive, but we really should remind ourselves from time to time and be conscious of it. Uh, plants and animals, though, are disappearing. The species are disappearing at an alarming rate. At the same time, we're seeing technology advance by leaps and bounds, not least biotech. Can technology help make up for the loss in biodiversity? Well, you've probably heard about disappearing bees, for example. Um, this is becoming an issue that insects are disappearing, and so we need those for our crops. Um, there are machines that are being built that can pollinate our crops so that we're still getting food, so they're taking over the job from bees, for example. But, I mean, these are a lot more expensive. And also, they can't account for the in complex interactions that animals have between each other and plants. Um, so it's always difficult to say whether these things are going to, to be able to take over or not. And what about efforts to keep nature intact, Louisa, to, to preserve biodiversity? Is there reason to be hopeful? 
there are things that we can definitely do. Um, agroforestry, for example, um, is something where trees and shrubs and biodiversity are integrated into our farming practices. Um, and obviously that is one of the, the biggest threats when it comes to biodiversity. As individuals, we can also look at uh, our food waste, making sure that we are only buying what we actually need rather than throwing so much away. Um, so there are all of these things that, that can be done. There is no one solution, but combined together, it will help. Louise Osborne from DW's Environment Desk, thank you so much.